Only a foolish optimist can deny the dark realities of the moment. Only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I did not take the oath I've just taken with the intention of presiding over the dissolution of the world's strongest economy. Uh, as you might imagine, I've been reading inaugural speeches uh, lately. Throughout American history, some of the best inaugural addresses have come in times of peril. This year, as Barack Obama prepares his, the country is steeped in recession and war. We start 2009 in the midst of a crisis unlike any we have seen in our lifetime, a crisis that has only deepened over the last few weeks. It is said that a great crisis can make a great president, and if he comes into office during that crisis, it can help him make a great speech. It's true, a crisis tends to produce a, a better speech. Ted Widmer, a former speechwriter for President Clinton, is now an historian at Brown. He says the speeches of presidents who came into office in perilous times can be instructive for Mr. Obama. Lincoln, 1861, probably the only moment that was even darker than 1933. I don't think we're in as dark a moment as either of those two, although certainly there are similarities. Mr. Obama, of course, is a particular devotee of Lincoln. Every time you read that second inaugural, you start getting intimidated, uh, especially because it's really short. Uh, you know, there, there's a genius to Lincoln that is not going to be matched. While many consider Lincoln's second inaugural to be the greatest ever, it's his first that may be more relevant for Mr. Obama. I'm wondering if he might surprise us a little and quote from the first inaugural. In the first inaugural, Lincoln is at the beginning of a long struggle, and I think historically we're a little more in that position than the second. In fact, Mr. Obama did quote from Lincoln's first inaugural during his victory speech in Grant Park on election night. As Lincoln said to a nation far more divided than ours, we are not enemies, but friends. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. Another model for Mr. Obama is FDR. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. FDR offered immediate prescriptions for the nation's ills and described the actions he was taking. He changed the country's mood almost overnight. He explained, I think, the nature of the crisis, both in his inaugural speech and subsequent fireside chats, uh, as well as anybody. Factual news, which you don't often get in these speeches, saying these are the things I'm going to do immediately to solve this uh, crisis, and it, and it had the desired effect. Of course, new presidents face new kinds of crises. The Cold War presented Kennedy with threats the world had never known. Now the trumpet summons us again, not as a call to bear arms, though arms we need, not as a call to battle, though in battle we are, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle. Ted Sorensen was Kennedy's speechwriter. It wasn't the same peril as Lincoln, Roosevelt, but it was the height of the Cold War, a time of economic recession. There were crises uh, to go around. But it was Kennedy's optimistic call to service that may be the most enduring of all inaugural moments. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. One element of a successful speech is a sense of hope and confidence about the future. One of the best at this was Ronald Reagan. We can and will resolve the problems which now confront us. And after all, why shouldn't we believe that? We are Americans. Mr. Obama sees his task, much as his predecessors did, to define the moment in realistic terms, but offer better days ahead. Uh, my job, both in the inauguration speech and in the months to come, is simply to explain as honestly and truthfully as possible 
what the circumstances are, what the, the best ideas are out there in terms of meeting those challenges. Uh, and if I do that, I feel confident that we'll come together to solve these problems. In his speech on election night, Mr. Obama showed that he already understood this formula. The road ahead will be long. Our climb will be steep. We may not get there in one year or even in one term. But America, I have never been more hopeful than I am tonight that we will get there. I promise you, we as a people will get there.